Hold on to your tinfoil hats because the truth is about to drop like a UFO landing in your backyard. In a world-shattering revelation, the renowned podcaster and skeptic buster Joe Rogan reveals what scientists just found under the eye of the Sahara Desert. Do you have what it takes to stomach the truth? Join us as we unveil the cosmic mysteries lurking beneath the sand dunes. The Sahara Desert, the ultimate scorching playground of Mother Nature, is not just any desert. It's the hottest, meanest desert around, making all other deserts feel like tiny patches of the sandbox. You thought Antarctica and the Arctic were big? Well, the Sahara is right up there, claiming the bronze medal in the Desert Olympics. The vast expanse of the Sahara Desert stretches over 11 countries in northern Africa, like a never-ending red carpet event. We're talking about Algeria, Chad, Egypt, Libya, and more. And now, picture the Sahara surrounded by its natural posse. On the west side, we've got the Atlantic Ocean, bringing those beach vibes to the desert like a surfer catching the perfect wave. In the north, the Atlas Mountains and the Mediterranean Sea join the party, adding a touch of rugged beauty and salty breezes. And in the east, the Red Sea struts its stuff, flaunting its vibrant hues like a flashy supermodel. We also have the Sahel, a semi-arid region that's like the Sahara's cool cousin. It's a delicate balance between dry and not so dry, where the desert meets the grasslands. Imagine Sahara as a whopping 9 million square kilometers of pure, unadulterated sandiness. That's like having a massive sandbox that stretches across a mind-boggling 31% of the entire African continent. And right in the heart of this mysterious creation, there's a silicious breeder covering an area that's at least 30 kilometers in diameter. What about the formation of it? Now, deep inside the eye of the Sahara, you'll find a motley crew of rocks. We can find all sorts of cool stuff here, from rhyolitic volcanic rocks to gabbros, carbonatites, and kimberlites. The rhyolitic rocks are the rock star lava flows, alongside their hydrothermally altered tophaceous buddies. They belong to two eruptive centers, like the remnants of ancient Mars. It's a simple scenario, erupting volcanoes causing chaos and then chilling out for millions of years. The gabroic rocks decided to form two ring dikes, the inner ring dike is about 20 meters wide, located a cozy three kilometers from the center of the Richat structure. And the outer ring dike stretches about 50 meters wide, getting comfy seven to eight kilometers away from the center. We've got a bunch of carbonatite dikes and sills, which are around 300 meters long, but they're not about width. Nope, they prefer to be one to four meters wide. It's all about the massive carbonatites devoid of vesicles. They've been chilling here for millions of years, dating back between 94 and 104 million years ago. Also, hidden in the northern part of the Richat structure, we stumbled upon a surprise. A kimberlitic plug and a few sills decided to crash the party. This kimberlite plug, with an impressive age of approximately 99 million years, adds a touch of glamour to the scene. So, what does all this rock extravaganza really mean? Well, apparently there's a massive alkaline igneous intrusion hanging out beneath the Richat structure. And now, it's time for the ultimate bombshell you have been waiting for. You see, in all its glory, the Richat structure has given rise to various conspiracy theories. Now, our pal Corsetti, who Joe Rogan invited on his show, believes he's found the smoking gun to prove that the Eye of the Sahara is the legendary Atlantis. And boy, does he have some evidence up his sleeve. But we'll get to that in just a moment. First things first, the big question that keeps all the brainy scientists up at night, where is this Atlantis? According to the tales, this place was one happening island near the Rock of Gibraltar, complete with a colossal Poseidon statue, fancy walls and canals. Plato, the ancient Greek philosopher, chimed in and claimed that this submerged city should have been chilling somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean. However, despite all our fancy technology, we haven't spotted any sunken metropolis down there. Bummer, right? Now get this, some folks have argued that Atlantis might be lurking in the Mediterranean off the coast of Spain, but hold your seahorses because a few brave souls even suggest it could be hiding under Antarctica. Can you believe it? Atlantis and the penguins hanging out together? Back in the day, many believed the Azores would be the jackpot location for Atlantis. But oh no, new research has shaken things up. 
Now the scientists are placing their bets on Cadiz, somewhere on the watery turf between Spain and Morocco. And can you imagine the size of Atlantis back in the days when it was a thing? Plato had a lot to say about it, claiming that this underwater kingdom was larger than both Libya and Asia combined. And you know what? Tertullian, an early Christian author, totally backed him up, saying it would make today's Libya and Asia look like pebbles in comparison. But things start to get fuzzy when it comes to the specifics. People after Plato's time couldn't quite agree on the size of Atlantis. Some claimed it was as big as Crete, which is Greece's largest island, while others just mentioned how it's a giant city, but they conveniently forgot to mention any actual measurements. Now, here's a fun twist. Edgar Cayce, an American mystic with a touch of Christian flair, had his own take. He believed that Atlantis and Eurasia were like two peas in a pod, perfectly matching in size. But what even is the deal with this city? Who made it and why? So, according to legend, the mighty Poseidon, god of sea and all things earthquakey, fell head over trident for a mortal beauty named Clato. To show his undying love, he decided to build a jaw-dropping city for her on a secluded island. And voila, Atlantis was born. Now let's dive into the nitty-gritty of this magical city. Poseidon, being the architect of love, constructed a home for Clato that was surrounded by a series of concentric rings made of land and water. There's no concrete evidence that Atlantis lies beneath the Eye of the Sahara. Sure, the Eye of the Sahara is a mind-blowingly ancient formation born hundreds of millions of years ago, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's hiding the lost city of Atlantis. We've got some major inconsistencies here. For starters, Atlantis was described as an island surrounded by water, while the Eye of the Sahara sits solidly on a continental plate, which isn't the same as having great freshwater lakes. And then, there's the whole time and archaeological puzzle. Plato said Atlantis met its fiery end around 9600 BC, but the Eye of the Sahara predates that by millions of years. It just doesn't fit the timeline. Maybe Atlantis is a figment of Plato's imagination, or a riddle waiting to be solved in a different corner of the world. The search continues as we venture forth into the unknown. Anyways, that's all we've got for today's video. If you like it and want to see more, drop a like and consider subscribing. See you in the next one.